Warning, the following may contain gelatinous cubes. Join fantasy authors Phil Tucker, Tamandra Whitecastle, David Benham, Benedict Patrick, and Josiah Bancroft as they roll dice and take on the bad guys in a game of Dungeons and Dragons. Five authors, five worlds, one adventure. It's time to get crit-faced. Previously on Crit Faced, traveling westwards down a misty road, our heroes have come upon a massive iron gate blocking their progress. As Jean Mallarmé, dressed as a fortune teller, approaches the gates, they mysteriously open. I turn and yell. I, I, I turn and, and, and yell to my friends. I think it's okay. I, I don't see anyone. I think that you should probably come come ahead now. I, I don't want to say I did a poor job, but that was not my finest performance. I'll give that one to you for free. Is the fog behind us encroaching on us as they move farther ahead? Uh, no, the the fog is remaining about ten feet behind uh, yourselves, the two of you. As you deliberate, I begin to strip off my. Costume and return to my fine clothes. <laughs> Would I be able to see anything from like a, a higher vantage point if I maybe scale the um, the iron gates? You could certainly have a try. I mean, what do what, what do I what do I do then? Well, it, it would be it would be an athletics check to climb. Athletics, so that's yeah. uh, plus two. Okay, and uh, I've got sixteen, so that's eighteen. No, nope, it's just the plus two. Oh, did you roll the die? Is that right? Yeah. All right, so you're uh, skimming up. Okay. Um, so we. So I did say that the uh, head, the head is about um, fifty foot high, and um, mm-hmm. so you you know it's it's not particularly easy going up because of how uh, you know climbing. You know, the, the the statue is made of stone, so um, you know over the it's obviously been. Uh, Experiencing this weather, these weather conditions for quite a while, it's covered in moss, quite slippy. But you do manage to um, make your way oh, about halfway up the uh, the side of the statue. Um, obviously, you could continue. Um, you're very much aware that the you know there's quite a drop now. Uh, if if heaven for fam, something should happen. Hmm. But can I see anything beyond the gate? No, you're um, because you're only halfway up the wall, basically. Um, the, because the gate, the gate's already open, um, but you're climbing up the the statue that's still on the the that's still facing uh, eastward uh, from the direction that you came. So you can see um, Kellen and Lord Talfin uh, a short distance away, uh, and beyond them, uh, the fog. Uh, you're aware that uh, you've got the shapes of the the trees um, poking out every so often from the. Uh, the forest, but you, the the sky, the, the fog just seems to almost be uh, a blanket, sort of heading upwards and and um, you know, blocking out all visibility beyond this this patch that seems to be open on the road. Hmm. So it's like um, we can't even see like castles, spires, or like there's something in the fog. No, you're 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 aware that there are trees uh, in there, and and every so often there are some branches that seem to be protruding. Um, but other than that, um, <laughs> distance visibility is, is is nil. Well, that's disappointing. I say and drop to the ground <laughs> very carefully. Okay. I mean, not from forty to fifty feet. <laughs> that's please. Right. We'll go for a careful trip. <laughs> so there was nothing to be seen. Uh, Madam, I, I, I apologize. I I took you for a dancer, but you're obviously a tumbler, an acrobat. That is. Quite an impressive feat. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. I am a woman of many hidden talents. Indeed. <laughs> so uh, I guess Talfrin stump, stumps up at this point uh, on his cane and says, did any of you see what caused the gates to open? It was my performance, I believe. There was no mechanism or anything. Mm-hmm. Are you... Uh, uh, let's take- are you all? Where, where are you now in relation to the gates? Have you have you walked through? Or are we I think, still on? I, I think we're between the statues, but not having it pass through the gates. Yes. Yeah. Right. What do you guys think? Between the statues. Mm-hmm. I so, say it's time to go through. I agree. Okay. 
Um, I want to do a quick investigation of the gates just before we go through, see if there's any mechanism. Yeah, do you want to do an investigation? Check it out just to see if you can figure out okay. how, the, how the gates yeah. have worked. You guys will give me just one moment. 19 plus 6 is 5, or a 15 plus 6 is 20. No, that's not bad. So what was your... Um... Nothing roused me from my stupor within gates. <laughs> no, uh, you. Uh, so you, you give the gets a good look over, uh, and you are convinced that there's there's no mechanism here that could have um, made that happen uh, automatically. Um, I mean, the only ways methods that you could possibly think of of those gates having opened is to be moved by someone or something uh, physically or by magical means. Uh, quick arcana check, see if I see any runes. Oh, that's already not work. So I turn to the others and I say, my foreboding grows. There's no mechanisms here. There must be sorcery at play. Sorcery? Well, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I think uh, we dally uh, for no purpose. It does not seem to be much we can do other than to follow the path that has been laid before us. I, I agree. We? I agree. To wherever it may lead. Indeed. I, I feel we should join arms. Does anyone else feel that? Like in a row, just joining arms, linking elbows and marching into the, the new world. Wouldn't that be a nice scene? I mean, think of it. Singing a merry song? Well, if you would like to have a concertina, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I am quite good at playing. The, I do not sing. No, of course not. No. <laughs> okay. Are, are we continuing? Uh, we are continuing. Okay. Can, can we still go like four abreast, or can we? Yeah, or do we no, have it's to? Just, it's just a, okay. another it's just route. Very like same route. Yeah. Very large gate. A very large gate. That's right. Okay. Um, so we continue down the road, guys. As you uh, move a, a short distance uh, away from the gate, you hear a, another screeching sound, uh, and you turn uh, to see again the source of this is the the iron gates. They have just uh, closed shut behind you. Obviously. I, I choose to take that as a good sign. Optimism. Mm -hmm. That's all we have. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my shoulders a slight shake and I say, let us press on. The night grows late and we have obviously a destination wait. All right. Um, as we continue forward then, guys, the, the uh, effect of the fog still persists. It seems to be following you, haunting you almost. The road takes a, a bit of a, a southerly dip here. Um, so you're still you know, lost among the trees. I mean, you really can't see the treetops here. You know, this fog is, is really blocking out all except this grey light that seems to be lighting you away. You feel here that the, uh, the trees on the side of the road seem to be... Um, almost unnaturally close to each other um, and, and it just, it, it's eerily silent you realize you know, there's no sounds of any any wildlife or creatures it's almost like the silence of a of a, a, of a forgotten graveyard um, Jean Lord Talfrin and Master Suna uh, you the three of you become aware of uh, a strange uh, scent in the air and, and you realize uh, swiftly that it is the smell of, of something dead. But not my, my My friend, I don't, don't mean to be rude, but um, did you step in something, perhaps uh, another part of yourself, or is this just the natural aroma that we must grow accustomed to? Is anyone else smelling the death? I am. Um, yes. I, I, I peer around us in an attempt to divine the source it's he's right there <laughs> i smell nothing <laughs> um, <laughs> once the um Kellen, once the the others have pointed out to you, you you become aware um, that they're right I'm, I'm certainly a smell that you'd be familiar with as well there's something that's been dying for or that's been dead for for a good while it's, it's close by there are many things that smell like death in my land <laughs> And people. Such as? Mm -hmm. The sheep and the headless people. <laughs> <laughs> that was mm. <laughs> mm. 
let's not go there. <laughs> Family reunions. We'll, we'll, yeah, so uh, should we investigate the, the aroma? Yeah, I'll try to find right. the source of it. Do, okay. I, uh, Do you want to take a, sur yeah. a sur survival check for this one, please? Uh, oh, sure that's not going to be good. Your <laughs> skills. Eight. Okay. Um, no, you're um, you're aware that there's um, you know there is a smell. It's coming somewhere from the the southerly side of the road, um, but you're not able to to discern its its source. Hmm. So sometimes I feel like it's prudent to not allow curiosity to dictate our, our, our direction here. So because something smells terrible off the road, I say that is all the more reason to continue down the road, right? We all agree? That's 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 done and dusted. Okay. <laughs> Why are you all standing there? You you, you want to go look and see what smells bad? Oh, you're like a bunch of dogs. If it's something that's been freshly killed, then there's a predator still Nearby. In our midst. Yes, it's the fog. It's the fog that's been following us. It's it's terrible. I, I, I light a I light a pebble and I throw it in the direction of the stench. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take a survival check as well? Do you want to? Mm. No, not really. Could you please take a survival <laughs> check? Yeah. Uh, with, with disadvantage. Or, or a four. <laughs> I throw the pebble straight up and yell, catch, and then I run. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, again, the uh, I mean, the pebble, you know, because it, it's, uh, you're obviously not throwing it a huge distance, it, it, it vaguely illuminates the undergrowth beyond the, the, the road, and, and you can just see that they, you know, there are more gnarled trees visible to you slightly, like the shadows, the, the, the limbs almost sort of groping towards the... Uh, you know the light from your pebble, but it doesn't illuminate anything. Um, anything else? Well, does anybody feel like searching for this further, or shall we continue on? I have made John, my feelings clear. Is, I believe you have. Mm -hmm. I'd like to search further. Okay. Well, you. Yeah. I think. Well, I have to. I have to say, since you've already searched for it, I think you're 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 coming up as if that. that the end of your abilities, unfortunately, you, you, you do continue to search. But well, fine, I'll stay with the actor. Unfortunately, you, you, you continue to have the same luck. Master Suma, do you want to look or shall we proceed down the road? Anyone else want to sniff? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I mean, mm -hmm. um, well, I could sort of then, uh, go closer to the, um, did you say southern? Yes. Southern part of the fog mm -hmm. and um, see what I can kind of make out. But uh, honestly, my feeling tells me we should just continue on because we're already trapped in this ominous fog that will kill us and we're smelling the scent of death and like there's sorcery everywhere. <laughs> so it's probably not going to get better. <laughs> Finally, some sanity. <laughs> like, well, uh, Very well. Glowing rock man and, and stinky and this lady. <laughs> He knows what she's talking about. <laughs> Following her. So, uh, what I, um, what do I, what do I do? Oh, um, um, are you searching? Yes. Yeah. So, because it's a sort of a wildernessy type tracking skills, we're using our survival skills here. Okay, survival is plus three, and I, I got a twelve. So okay. that's fifteen. Yeah, you're aware that uh, Kellen and Lord Talfrin, they, they, they haven't travelled far enough. Um, it's actually the source of the stench that's coming. Uh, from a little bit further down the road um, and you lead everyone to um, if a, a ship that is just uh, just off the roadside, just within the fog, but uh, close enough to your light sources that you can still make out the shape of a, a human corpse uh, half buried in the uh, sort of shallow underbrush just beyond the, the roadside. Um, so it's, it's definitely dead. Yeah, well, you can see, I mean, you can really, uh, you know, without having to put your hands, you know, into the fog, you can see that it's a, uh, you know, it's a young man who's, who's here. Um, his clothes uh, have been torn and, and raked with claw marks. Um, actually, his body has obviously been there a few days because um, some wildlife has obviously taken interest in him and been pecking and gnawing at him a bit. Uh, you can actually make out paw prints um, on the roadside uh, as well, just just close to him. He's been dead for several days and he is holding a crumpled envelope in one hand. 
Can I reach the envelope? Yeah, certainly. Okay. Um, so you. Uh, yeah. Sorry. No, no, not at all. Again, uh, you know, putting your hand within the fog, um, you know, has the same draining effect on you. Um, but you're able to withdraw your hand quickly, uh, clutching the, the envelope. Okay, I'll read that. Uh, Heal thee of might and valour. I, the Burgomaster of Barovia, send you honour with despair. My adopted daughter, the fair Irina uh, Kolyana, has been these past nights bitten by a vampire. Over 400 years, this creature has drained the lifeblood of my people. Now... My dear Irina languishes and dies from an unholy wound caused by this vile beast. He has become too powerful to conquer. So, I say to you, give us up for dead, and encircle this land with the symbols of good. Let holy men call upon their power that the devil may be contained within the walls of weeping Barovia. Leave our sorrows to our graves, and save the world from this evil fate of ours. There is much wealth entrapped in this community. Return for your reward after we are all departed for a better life. Kolyana Idorovich, Burgomaster. I have never heard of these countries before. Barovia. Mm. And so, am I given to understand that a vampire is a kind of fish? What Does anyone know what vampires are? No, so it would seem from the context, if I may, my dear Master Sama, if I may look at the letter, it seems to be some blood-drinking demon of some sort. Does that seem right blood to you? Blood-drinking demon? During the lifeblood of wound. my mm. people. It's been Soft. bitten. It bit this Irina and has apparently been in the process of draining the lifeblood of others. Mm. And he's referred to as a demon. So whatever it may be, it's clearly an unholy menace. Well, I, I don't want to be the first to say it, but we should we should run and leave. We should leave and run. I don't... I... Did the letter sure. say much wealth? <laughs> I did. It said there's much wealth and trap in this community. Keller, in your land, is, are, have you heard of such things as vampires? I have not, but there is much wealth in my land. <laughs> I just don't have much of it. <laughs> Topper looks a little confused, but he says, very well. Okay. So, the votes so far uh, are actually meaningless because we have no choice in which direction to go. It's true. But I think we should at least like uh, all agree that that um, this is an unusual circumstance, and uh, we probably should should stick together through what is ahead. I I, I know that I've said some some terrible things about you people, uh, but uh, I think that we should not forget that that there's nothing more precious than life, and if we wish to survive this, we must work together. For life, I, I agree. <laughs> For life. And in order to save the poor people of Barovia. Yes, them as well. If if we can. Well, we are all united in our ignorance of the plan of these events, so I am in favor of remaining with you all. Especially since, as I said, the fog gives us no choice in the matter. Exactly. Shall we, with much trepidation, proceed down this road? Are we still heading west? So the, the road had taken a, a slightly southern uh, bend a, a short while back. Okay. Not not quite pure south, Keller. but quite southwest. We're heading southwest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keller, would, would you do, do me the favor of examining this corpse and seeing if you can determine what caused its death? What manner of beast? Okay. It looks like it was killed. <laughs> and, yes. Um, yes. It, it has clearly been uh, attacked by um, animals uh, of some kind. Um, your your guess would be there... wolves, um, but uh, just by based on the paw prints that are around here. So not there with the light. Okay. Mm. Very well. Wolves. And vampires, whatever they are. Hmm? 
So wolves and vampires, whatever they are. Okay. So I, I still say that this is probably not the best place to spend the evening. Um, I, I, can we all agree to, to, to hurry for it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So um, we'll just continue together, guys, um, down this road. Um, uh, after a, a short distance on from where you found the, the corpse, the, the path uh, bends again, uh, redirecting back westward. Um, and you are aware that the trees uh, on either side of the road um, are, are, are becoming less common uh, and uh, eventually they, they disappear almost uh, altogether. They, instead, what seems to be uh, is, is some kind of uh, grassland, basically, uh, but the, the fog persists. Uh, so although you're aware that the, the environment outside has changed, um, you can see very little of it. Um, Continuing onwards, uh, and really we're travelling for the best part of a mile now since the, the, the forest had disappeared. Um, tall houses, uh, dark as tombstones, um, begin to extend uh, in front of you. You're realising that this, this road is, is leading you uh, into a village. Um, yeah. can, can I see the letter before we go any further? Mm hmm yeah, I, I'm. I'm curious. Like the 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 letter itself. Who has that? I think I took it back. I I don't want to again embarrass you all with my skills, but I am quite a skilled forger, and I believe that I might be able to forge us a letter of introduction, which would make our approach more for for fortuitous for all of us. What do you What do you think? Perhaps I could say that we are, we've been summoned, and we are. Um, well, we obviously um, have been. Well, but I mean, welcome. I, I don't know how you uh, operate when you go to a new town, but sometimes I, I like to have a letter of introduction because they, they may not be as happy to see me as I am to see them. I, it, it's just a thought. If you don't think it's worth uh, taking a moment to forge a letter of introduction, I suppose we don't have to. We are unacquainted with this people and their ways and their customs. More the reason to have some note from their burgomaster uh, saying that we are good people and that we can be relied upon and we are not at all duplicitous or thieving, uh, as of course we are not. There are not many letters in my land. <laughs> okay, it, was a, it was just a thought. It was a thought. We can continue, but... Um... Okay. All right. Do you want to approach the, the village? So does the fog allow us to? Yeah, yeah so the, the, fog, the, the, the fog, the path is, is definitely uh, opening up into the village. So so yes, we could continue on it. Is it like a wooden sign that says this used to be Barovia? <laughs> no, no, there's nothing, there is oh. nothing like that. Uh, you're, still, that you're, still a wee, you're still a wee distance away from, uh, about 30 feet away, still from okay. the first buildings. We should probably put our best foot forward at least. Can we agree on that? Yes. Okay. So who who feels that they can represent the group well? <laughs> okay, I will take your, your vote of confidence. It's I, I am honored and of course I'm I'm happy to represent the group. I don't like to say that I'm charismatic, but uh I, I, I'm I'm quite popular with the ladies. Um so uh, <clears throat> it would help me if you all say as little as possible. And smell as little as possible, if that's possible. <laughs> okay. Yeah, of course. But if you are in any way act in an undignified manner, then you will be forced to speak up. I, 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 am, I am the epitome of, of dignity, uh, my, my, my good man. Uh, yes. Are we going okay. to... Continue. You go first. <laughs> okay, I, I, I lead us into the, the, the town. Okay. Uh, with my hand raised in greeting and saying, hello. So, um, as, as you walk forward, uh, the, the buildings uh, of the town, uh, you realize that they're obviously, they're not derelict, uh, but they're in a very poor state of repair. Uh, there's obviously not a lot of love has been given um, to these places. Like paint work is, is, is cracked and peeling. Indeed, if, it, if it's still even there, there's a lot of uh, sort of wooden frames that basically are, are beginning to rot almost in the windows. Uh, and the windows are either shuttered up from the inside uh, or, or, uh, or 
in, in or if you try to peer inside any of the, the windows of the first few houses, it's just very dark. You can't really see anything. Um, you quickly reach, uh, upon getting into the village, you quickly reach a, a crossroads uh, and you're aware that the, the fog persists in here. Uh, and in fact, um, the, uh, the, the, the road west, uh, you can only walk, you'd only be able to walk down that road a few feet before reaching the bank of fog. Same with the southern road, but the the road to the north um, extends slightly further. You can, the, the, the fog is allowing you to see slightly further up that road. Um, there's lots of solemn dwellings up there, some closed up shops. You can see a tavern close by that's closed as well. Um, but what is drawing your eye right now is um, a pair of children standing in the middle of the lifeless sh- this lifeless street, uh, softly whimpering. I turn to, to the group and say, I am so sorry, I should have said this before. I don't do children. Um, they they unnerve me. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, as someone who has more of a maternal instinct, could they please take the lead at this point? They, children. <laughs> I will go and talk with these children. Maybe yes. they need our help. Yes, that's a lovely idea. Is this like I a follow ghost behind. time, a, a ghost town kind of? It's like, is there no other sign of life than these two creepy there's, children there's standing no, in front of the fog? Ab- absolutely no, no, <laughs> no other sign of life. No. Uh, okay. 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 Um, so you, uh, so are, is Master Sona approaching the children um, by herself? Uh, I think nope. I have I'll, backup. I'll go along. Okay. Um, I'll go with her. I I used to be a child. Okay. So the. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the as you as you approach them, uh, so there's a the, the two children. One of them uh, is a slightly older girl. She looks about uh, ten years old, uh, and the the, the boy uh, standing beside her uh, seems to be uh, quite a bit younger than her. They're both dressed in quite fine clothing, uh, if drab. It's it's, it's not uh, there's not a lot of colour about them, but it's all sort of finely embroidered. Uh, the boy is the one who's whimpering. Uh, he, he's, he's sort of crying and uh, clutching a, a stuffed doll, uh, and the girl uh, turns around and shushes him. And then she turns back to you and, and, and looks stubbornly at you and she says, and she points uh, at the building that she is standing beside. So there's a, a tall brick row house. Uh, it's definitely seen better days with dark windows and, and um, uh, it's got a sort of a, a gated portico on the ground floor. Uh, the houses on either side are abandoned, but she's pointing at this house in the middle and she looks at you stubbornly and she says, there is a monster in our house. Crit Faced is a weekly Dungeons & Dragons podcast. To make sure you never miss an episode, and to get an exclusive prequel episode of the podcast where you can find out what our characters were up to before this adventure began, head over to CritFacedPodcasts.com and join our Crit Faced fan group. 